imagine that you're driving down the street. As you approach the intersection, the light turns red. So you wait. Or you make an appointment with a doctor. They tell you to arrive about 10 minutes early. So you get there 10 minutes early. And you wait for th another 30 minutes before you see the doctor. Yes, you wait. You go to pick up a loved one at the airport. Their plane's on time. It's great to see them. You go to baggage claim. And yet again, you wait. Waiting. It's part of what we do. It's built into our life. We encounter it every day. Waiting is one of those things we experience. Sometimes we just take a deep breath and wait. Other times we get frustrated and annoyed. I was supposed to meet so-and-so at such and such a time. They're late. I'm waiting. Don't they respect me? Don't they think my time is valuable? All kinds of things run through our minds when we're waiting. Today, I want to talk about waiting. I want to talk about waiting and spiritual practice. I also want to talk about waiting in this Christmas holiday. But before I talk about waiting, or while you're waiting for me to talk about waiting, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. When we wait, time sort of changes for us. Time, in a sense, stands still. It goes more slowly. That's because we're not progressing to whatever it is we're going to. We're waiting for that next thing, so time sort of drags on. We may be frustrated with it, or we may sort of embrace it. We may try to fill it up by playing a game on our phone or reading email or whatever it is we do. But waiting isn't something we typically plan on or schedule. It just happens to us and is often caused by outside circumstances. Waiting is very much part of our life. It's so much part of our life that we often don't recognize it. Part of what it does when it happens is it creates this space in our life, often space that we're not expecting and are not quite sure how to fill. The other thing that creates space in our life is spiritual practice. But spiritual practice is a little bit different from waiting. Waiting happens to us and is often caused by others or something else like the red light. Spiritual practice is something we choose to do. We decide that at a certain time we're going to do our meditation, for instance. And in that time of meditation, while we may start with a prayer or breathing or some mantra or word or something like that to transition us, what we're really trying to do is enter a space, a time where nothing is really happening for us. It's a time of emptiness. And it's in that emptiness, whether it's for 15 or 20 minutes or a half hour, that we begin to experience a greater sense of peace, a sense of wholeness, of something coming to fruition within us. And that's often different from waiting because when we wait, we're not sure what's gonna happen next because we want something to happen. We want to go through the red light. We want to get our baggage and go. We want to move on to the next thing. But spiritual practice is about leisure. Now there's a time when spiritual practice and waiting come together and join each other. And that happens for Christians in the weeks before Christmas. The weeks before Christmas are what Christians traditionally call Advent. It's not the Christmas season. The time of Advent is a time of waiting. It's a time of preparation. It's a time of opening ourselves for what's going to come at Christmas. Christmas is December 25th and the 12 days that continue to January 6th. That's Christmas. But, you know, because of the retail industry, we've started celebrating Christmas, well, whenever it was still Halloween. But the spiritual practice is that in the weeks before Christmas, we're preparing. 
we're looking at this time of Advent, waiting, preparation, anticipation, and experiencing hope for what's going to come. This is all ritualized in some very common themes that happen for us. You know, we recognize the Advent wreath, the lighting of four candles, one candle on each Sunday before Christmas. That was a ritual given to us by the Protestant reformer, Martin Luther. It was a way of helping to understand this time of waiting. The Advent calendar, also from German Lutherans, is a way to mark time in preparation for Christmas Day, a time to mark our waiting, a way to mark our waiting. Many people know the ancient hymn that's preserved in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, dates back to the sixth century. And while the tune is a little bit mournful and the words call out in a way that evokes a desire for something more, it orients us towards an anticipation, towards a fulfillment of what could be. So what is it that we're waiting for? What are we preparing for? What do we hope will come? Well, that may be a little bit different for all of us, but I want to suggest that there are some things that I think we all are waiting for and hoping for and want to come to fruition. It's almost two years that we have been in this pandemic. Millions of people have died. Millions of other people have been seriously ill. Workplaces have been disrupted. Schools have been disrupted. People have experienced a lot of hardship, and that's evidenced in the rates of anxiety disorders, depression, addictions, the people who have overdosed on drugs, and so many other kinds of issues. People are suffering, and in that suffering, we're looking for something hopeful. Around the world, there is a great deal of strife. There are more refugees in the world today than there have ever been before because of political upheaval and war. Governments are divided. Even countries that are supposedly at peace experience a great deal of tension today. We're hoping for something better. We're hoping for peace in a very real way. And as we face the climate crisis, we're hoping for the future of the planet, that humanity will be able to survive on this planet as well as other life. What we experience in our spiritual practice is a clue to us of what we hope for. What was it that the angels said on that first Christmas Eve? Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. We experience that peace here on earth when we engage in our spiritual practice and create room within ourselves to allow peace to fill us. And as it fills us, it impacts not just our own lives, but the lives of our loved ones and those around us. Because we begin to relate differently. We begin to relate to others out of that peace. And as more and more people experience peace within their lives because of their spiritual practice, because of creating openness in their life, then goodwill begins to manifest itself among people. So the promise of the shepherds of peace, the promise of the angels to the shepherds of peace on earth, goodwill to people, is a promise that we can help fulfill but we do that in our lives by embracing the waiting that's characterized by Advent. A waiting that opens us to anticipate something good, something whole, something that will renew us and all of the world. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate your being here. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, leave me some comments, share this video with others, and know that my hope for you is that your life will be filled with peace and with hope. Thank you.